Good morning. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Um, yeah. Mother's Day is it's kind of one of those days that can be a little bittersweet. It's happy for those of us that, that you know, have mothers that are still ar- around, but it can be sad for those who have lost a mother recently and things like that. And it can bring kind of mixed feelings and then, you know, and, and then the sadness of a broken world that we live in, even some, sometimes some of the broken relationships we have are with mother or mother to child. So we're, we're sensitive to all of that today, but we are grateful for all the mothers that are a part of Bethel and a part of the Bethel community and the greater Bethel community. And we're, we're so glad that you are all here today. Uh, we continue through the season of Easter. And we're going to be uh, continuing um, looking at the Acts readings. Uh, to, last week, we looked at young Saul, the, the zealot, and, uh, and his zeal and his cactus. And this week, we're going to Look at, at Saul, who becomes Paul, and a little bit softer side of him a few years later. But I ask you a question. How many of you have softened up in the last 25 years of your life? We all laugh, right? So it's interesting. You see, we see Saul in his kind of mid-20s, this zealot persecutor going all out. And then but 25 years later, like the rest of us, he softens up a little bit, so we get to see that side of, of Paul this morning. So I ask you to stand as we sing our opening hymn, Savior, Like a Shepherd, Lead Us. We are gathered this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. us 
Let us then together confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have against you God's word and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Give us, re renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Friends, I bring good news. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows upon them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our psalm is Psalm 23, the familiar, the Lord is our shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows.
be with you. We pray together. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have wakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, You may be seated for the readings. The epistle reading for the uh, fourth Sunday of Easter is from Revelation 7, starting with uh, verse 9. Here the Apostle John is still writing about his vision while he's a captive on the Isle of uh, Patmos. After this, I looked, and behold, I saw a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, these are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, nor thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The gospel reading is uh, from John chapter 10. At that time, the feast of dedication took place at Jerusalem. It was winter. And Jesus was walking in the temple in the colonnade of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me. But you do not believe because you are not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
This time I invite our kids to come on up for children's church, or children's message, and those that are participating online. I've got a little object lesson for you guys. How are you girls this morning? I like your dresses. All right. Can you guys tell, you know what, you know what this is? What is it? A Kleenex. Okay, when do you use a Kleenex? Your nose is stubby, so yeah, you, you can like this, you know, like you, you know, and then you're almost out of Kleenex here, but we go, you know, you blow your nose, right? Like, yeah, just like that, you know, like, you, 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 you know, it's like that. When else, do, when else might you use a Kleenex? When you're sad, right? What, 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 how, how do you use it then? Can you show me? Yeah, here, show me, show me. Like, you're really sad. What did you do? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're sad and you, you like, you know, it's, you know, so when are some times that you're sad? When are times that we are sad? When someone's died, right? When else? When you're upset, right? Like, what about when you fall and it's like scrape your knee? Yeah, you're sad and you need a Kleenex. Or how about when you say goodbye to someone? Like if, you're, like if grandma and grandpa or if you're hanging out with some friends and you have to say goodbye, does that make you sad sometimes? Yeah, it makes me sad too. And our, and our story today that we're going to read from the Bible, Paul, from, from the Bible, had spent three years with the, these friends, and he was saying goodbye. He was getting on a ship to say goodbye, and he didn't know if he would ever see them again. Do you think Paul was sad? Would you be sad? If, yeah, like if you had to, like, if you moved somewhere else, you had to say goodbye to your friends. Would that be sad? Yeah, that's what Paul had to do. He was, had to say goodbye to his friends. So, And in that time, he said this is what he said. He said, remember all the times we talked about Jesus together. Remember all, so do you have friends that you talk to Jesus about? Like maybe friends at school and things like that. So when you're sad, when you, when you have to say goodbye, maybe to your grandparents or your friends or whatever, you can always remember the good times you had and that you hopefully get to see them again and all the times you got to talk to Jesus with them, right? All right. Okay. Thank you so much. I have a lot going on up here this morning. Sometimes it's good to be from the pulpit because you can put things in. <laughs> it's like lots of good handy places to put things. All right. Grace, mercy, and peace be from God as we meditate on his word this morning. And may this meditation be pleasing to him. Amen. Amen. Uh, today's readings alone caused me anxiety. And you know, those of you that know me, by now, know that I'm usually not the one having anxiety. I'm usually the one causing it in others. Um, but there were so many good readings. It's, it's, there's a couple things going on today. It's, it's the, the secular holiday of the Hallmark holiday of Mother's Day. So there, there's many examples of, of, of strong women in the Bible who are her great mothers or mother figures that we could go with. There, there's the Christ. This is also the Sunday where we kind of in our church calendar, acknowledge um, Jesus as the good shepherd. So we have the, the, the Acts reading, we have, the, we have the, the Psalm reading, the Lord is my shepherd, we have the gospel reading, um, we have, which is also about, you know, Jesus saying, I am the good shepherd. And then we have the Revelation reading, which is one of my favorite in the whole Bible, because it reminds us that, that our ultimate destination is not heaven, it's where? It's right back here in the new heavens and the new earth with Jesus in the middle as the lamb, right? So all these great options. But we're going to go with Acts. And I, and I chose Acts for a very specific reason. Uh, the, this is the time of the year where we don't have a quote-unquote Old Testament reading. The first reading in the normal order of things is, is from Acts. And, it, and we, we do that during the season of Easter because we're kind of looking at some of the, the events from the early church. And I thought that, you know, last week we preached on the, 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 the text, which is the conversion or the the, tra the total transformation of, of, of Saul, who later will become Paul. And this reading, like I said at the beginning, kind of shows the other side of that. We, we, and, and it kind of bookmarks um, 
the life of Saul and the life of Paul and the, and the transformation that, that he made from this young, zealous, just, you know, take no prisoners kind of guy to this kind of the shepherding pastor in, in the spirit of the good shepherd. Like I said before, are you the same person you were 25 years ago? How much have you changed in the last 25 years? And today, you know, we, we see this in the, con the greater context of what's going on here is that Paul is saying goodbye. And like I shared with the, with the, with the young ladies here, Paul is not just saying goodbye to someone he just met. He's pay, saying goodbye to, to people that he's spent three years of toil and ministry with in the church in Ephesus. He's spending so, and he's doing that um, in a very specific way. So let's see if I can get, oh, what, there we go. See, even a cactus, talked about the cactus last week, can show a softer side from time to time. How many of you have cactus or cacti in your yard or in your, at your I love, I, I personally lo love cactus. See, look at that. That's, that's in my front yard. I'm making a little cactus garden. And look, the cactus is sprouting flowers. It's showing something beautiful, something softer. Saying goodbye can often bring out our softer side, right? Even the, the, the strongest, toughest, most manly men, when you say goodbye to someone that you love, especially if you think it's the last time you're going to see that person, we all turn to jello, right? We all soften. We all, our, our rough edges all kind of come, start to smooth off a little during those moments of having to say goodbye, especially to someone that we are very close to, especially when we think this may be the last time we see that person, especially when it's people that you've gone through something very difficult with or something very challenging with. Think of a, maybe in, in the context of, of, of work, think of a work team that you went through a really difficult time with. And then when, when one of the persons from that team moved to another city or retired or, or even passed away, that, that, that's, that's a hard thing to say goodbye to because you've been through this really difficult time, this really challenging time. This really sometimes ex exciting time that, that, that caused you to grow, and you're, and you're trying to figure out what is next. So think about, when is a time you had to say a difficult goodbye? And I think this is super appropriate for, on Mother's Day for any of us that have lost our mothers or our grandmothers, you know, the last time you saw them. That was a difficult goodbye. There's no way around that. It was. And it is. And it's still painful. Or maybe some of those, that some of you anticipate that day. Um, you know, it, it brings up a certain amount of emotion, a certain amount of sadness. But there's others. There's, like I said, a, cl a close co-worker, uh, the death of another loved one, uh, moving, changing jobs, kind of at the end of you know, high school or college or, or, or a season in your life where you, you kind of went through something with a group of people, and you know that you may see a few of those people again, but you're never going to see that group again in the same way. Sometimes saying goodbye can be very difficult. But I also want to throw this at you. Every time you say goodbye, you grow a little. Every time you have to say goodbye, now sometimes you grow emotionally, sometimes you grow physically in the sense of, of you know, who you are as a person. Sometimes you grow spiritually through that experience. And sometimes it takes some pain to get you there. But every time you say goodbye, you grow a little. Is that, you, do you agree with that? I think, I think that's a really good, I, I, did not, I did not come up with that quote. I stole it from an from a article, but it's really good, so I'm going to use it. Look at that. Bye-bye. This is from that article that I read that, that talked about this, this idea of, you know, just kind of, when, when you see that, that kind of little bit of sadness, a little bit of happiness, like just, but saying goodbye is tough. There's no way around it. 
In our text today, we see Paul saying a very difficult goodbye. As I mentioned before, he had uh, spent three years in Ephesus in this church. And and if you look in the chapters before, chapter 19 of Acts, it it gives a, it tells what he did and and a lot of what he did. And obviously it's only a few verses, but kind of you get a, a feel for his ministry there and what it was like. Three years is the longest that we know of Paul spending at any one city. You know, Paul was an, an apostle. He was a missionary. He went to go plant churches. He didn't stay at a church 35 years or, or five. He was, he, he was on the go to the next project, the next thing. So three years was a significant amount of time for Paul to be at one place. And it just shows how much those relationships at Ephesus meant to him and, and how important they were to him. Now, Paul had already left Ephesus, and he had actually just gone to uh, Macedonia and Greece, and he was actually on his way to Jerusalem. He had, he had taken this gathering from the, the churches in, in Asia and was going to bring them to the, the, the people in Jerusalem. The, 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 the believers in Jerusalem were suffering mightily. Um, it was a very tumultuous time. In Jerusalem, that that soon the temple was going to be destroyed. There were riots, and and so that he was bringing this offering to them, and he had promised to do that. And even though people had been telling Paul, "Don't go," it's too dangerous for you there. They knew what had happened to Jesus when he went to Jerusalem, and they knew that the Jewish leaders, the same Jewish leaders that at one point endorsed Saul to persecute believers were waiting for him to to show up at Jerusalem so they could get him, pay him back for turning against them. So time and time again, Paul had been warned, don't go, don't go, please don't go. But he felt so convicted and and so convinced that he needed to go, that he was going to go. He felt that this needed to happen. He felt, it'll say in our text this morning, that the Holy Spirit compelled him to go. Like he, he felt he had no choice but to go. So on his way back, he stops at this little town called Miletus, and, Mil- and it's right near Ephesus, but not, so he, from there, he calls the leaders of the church in Ephesus, the, the, the elders, um, the, the leaders of that group, and kind of has this, fair, this farewell message to them, and he says goodbye. Now, this is obviously Paul's words, but they're being recorded by by St. Luke, who the writer of Acts is. So we're going to be looking at a a bit of a long text, uh, starting with verse 17 of chapter 20 of the book of Acts. The words will be on the screen, but you also have these these fancy new uh, pew Bibles if you want to read along there as well. It says, now from Miletus, he set to Ephesus and called the elders of the church to come to him. When they came to them, he said to them, you yourselves know how I lived among you the whole time from the first day that I set foot in Asia, serving the Lord with all humility and with tears and trials that happened to me through the plots of the Jews, how I did not shrink from declaring to you anything that was profitable and teaching you in public and from house to house, testifying both to Jews and Greeks of repentance towards God of faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And now behold, I am going to Jerusalem, constrained by the Holy Spirit, not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and afflictions await me. Now, how many of you would go to a place knowing that imprisonment and afflictions await you? And you go anyway, following the, the, the footsteps of the good shepherd, Paul is here. But I do not account my life for any value or any precious to myself, if only I may finish my course, the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. And now behold, I know that none of you among whom I have gone about proclaiming the kingdom will see my face again. Therefore, I testify to you, day that I am innocent of the blood of all of you, 
For I not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Pay, attention, pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock, this, once again the shepherding language, in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come after you and not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves will rise men speaking twisted things to draw away from the disciples after them. Therefore, be alert, remembering that for three years I did not cease night or day to admonish everyone with tears. And now I command you to God that to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all who are sanctified. I coveted no one's silver or gold or apparel. You know yourselves know that these hands ministered to my necessities and to those who are with me. In all things, I have shown you that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, how he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he said these things, he knelt down and prayed with them. And there was much weeping, much many tissues, much weeping. On the part of all, they embraced Paul and kissed him, being sorrowful, most of all, because of the word he had spoken. And they would not see his face again, and they accompanied him to the ship. It sounds like a pretty intense goodbye, doesn't it? It sounds like a pretty heavy moment in the life of Paul, in the life of this church. Now, like I mentioned before, this is 25 years after the road to Damascus, and a lot can change in 25 years. We've joked about that already, but we see this softer side of Paul. I mean, he, there's still this zeal, there's still this intensity you know like like i said last week even as you soften out the rough edges of your personality the core of who you are and who god created you to be does not change but we see a much softening of that we mean we see him not quite so zealous not quite so in your face about it he's he's being very shepherding he's reminding them of the of his three years with them and all the things that they had endured. He, he's reminding them of how he taught them the full counsel of God. You see, we see a softer, more humble version of Paul. Saul the zealot was very much about his agenda, which was his agenda, which was to persecute the church. And he thought he was doing it for God. Have you ever thought you were doing something for God? Only to find out later you were probably doing it for yourself. It happens to me all the time. But the point is, he, he, 25 years of softening, 25 years of, of, of proclaiming the word of God to all these different cities, of being persecuted, being beaten, being threatened with his very life, has softened him. Encountering the risen Lord on that day of his transformation has softened him. And he's able to gather with this group of, of leaders and present himself in a way different manner. But yet we still see that same, ver the same zeal, that same core of who he is. But his emphasis is so much different here. His emphasis is on... on Making sure that he even says, you know, I, I worked with my own hands. You know, we, we know that at, at various stops along the way, Paul worked as a tent maker um, to help offset the cost of his service to the church. He, he, he calls them to remember the weak. He said, wolves are going to come after you. This church is going to be attacked. Now that I'm no longer with you, it's going to be hard. Hard times are to come. So be ready. Take care of the weak. Take care of the poor. Take care of those who can't take care of yourself. And he says this quote from Jesus that it's more blessed to give than to receive. Or sometimes it's translated, 
It's better to give than to receive. Sounds like a good mother's advice, like you know, on Mother's Day. The interesting thing is Paul quotes this here, but nowhere in the Gospels is this quote. Matthew doesn't say it. Mark doesn't say it. Luke doesn't show Jesus saying it. John doesn't. This is a, a quote from Jesus that only happens here. So obviously it was probably something Jesus said multiple times. But for whatever reason, it never ended up in the Bible other than right here. Paul said, oh, back, you know, when, when Jesus used to say it's better to give than to receive. But it's interesting. The, the one quote that Paul gives us here is, is a quote that doesn't show up in the Bible anywhere else as far as a, a direct quote from Jesus. But really, what, what, what is the, 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 the main focus of what he is saying here? What, you know, he's saying that because he knows every time you say goodbye, you grow a little. And he knows that this goodbye is going to be bitter. But Paul has said goodbye many times by now. He's had to say goodbye to his way of life before when he, when, he, when he made his conversion, when he had his transformation, when he went from, from the zealot persecutor to the follower, apostle of Jesus, what do, you think Jesus had, what, what do you think Paul had to say goodbye to then? What friends, what family, what relationships did he have to walk away from then? And throughout his ministry, as he's going from town to town to town to start these new churches... He, he was very similar to my buddy Travis, who preached for you guys a couple weeks ago. Travis has started, he's starting his third church. Now, they're all in the same general area in, 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 a, in, in a few years. But the idea that every time you leave that church, every time Paul left a city that he had started a church in, sometimes he made it back to that city. Sometimes he never did. He, he had become very good at saying goodbye. And not only that... But 25 years of trials and challenges had changed his outlook. He had become much more self-reflective. He would become much more kind of aware of his, his weaknesses and, 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 and his tendencies to do things that, that got in the way of the gospel. And, and he says even here how I preach with humility. We see this, this humbling side of Paul, we, we see that, that he no longer um, is just kind of plowing through people, but he's, he's saying, how can I serve you? How can I share with you the good news? How can, I, how can we grow together? And we see that the, the effect of this, because both parties, Paul and the, 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 the elders gathered here at the end, it says this. That he, he prayed with them, there was much weeping on the part of all. They embraced Paul and kissed him, being sorrowful most of all because of the words he had spoken and because they would not see his face again. And then they accompanied him to the ship. And then you kind of get this very powerful image of them literally waving goodbye as he takes that ship on his way to Jerusalem. You see, Paul had learned that every time you say goodbye, you grow a little. So let's come back to us. What are some of the, what are some of the goodbyes in your life that you have grown from? Who are some of the people, some of the relationships? Maybe even um, a job or a situation, a beloved car or whatever something that you really cared about, a, a pet. Some of the most difficult goodbyes in my life have been some of the dogs I've had to put down. What, what are some difficult goodbyes that you've had in your life that have helped shape the person that you are? Maybe help soften off some of those rough edges of you. Maybe force you to lean into the softer side of your personality. I, I do commend to you, I shared this last week and several of you asked me about it. So this is the book. I'm, I'm gonna, I'll have a copy of it out there for you. If you want to really dig into the life of, of St. Paul, read this book. It's called Paul, 
a biography. It's written by N.T. Wright, and it, and it kind of lays out his life chronologically. Because there, And there's an interesting insight that, that he gives in this book that when Luke and even Paul in his speech here, the, the account of what we get from the book of Acts about Paul's life in Ephesus kind of makes it sound like it wasn't really that bad. So a couple things happened. There was, I mean, I mean Paul had started a riot, but that was kind of normal for him. And, um, and, but it's kind of, it kind of gets glossed over. But when you turn to 2 Corinthians, at the very beginning of 2 Corinthians, it's interesting. You don't get it in a book, in a letter he writes to the Ephesians. He, he tells the church in Corinth about his trials in Ephesus. And it gives you some insight into why this goodbye was so bitter. He tells them this. He says, if we are afflicted, it's for your comfort and salvation. And if we are comforted, it's for your comfort, which we experience when we patiently endure the same sufferings as we suffer. He talks about su that our suffering, when we suffer, we share in Christ's suffering. So kind of a theology of the cross. And he says, we do not want you to be ignorant brothers of the affliction we experienced in Asia. Ephesians. For we were so utterly burdened beyond our strength that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt that we had received the sentence of death, but that was to make us rely not on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. He delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us. On him we have set our hope, and he, that he will deliver us again. Think about that. So utterly burdened beyond our strength that we despaired of life itself. We thought we were going to die. I, mean, I don't know if you've seen the movie, for example, Band of Brothers. It's a great movie about World War II. But it's about, it's about a group of, of airmen, that, 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 that paratroopers that were dropped in, 101st Airborne, and it's about their, their journey um, through Europe. But it's kind of like when, when you go through something this intense, you know, a, a truly like people that, that go to war together or people that go through a very difficult time, people that... They go through like a hurricane or, or, or a tornado or when a neighborhood or, or a group of people have to experience this, this periling thing like Paul did, it makes you closer. It brings you closer together. And when you've got to say goodbye to that group of people that you experience that with, it changes you forever. That saying goodbye does. Because you remember of what you went through. So today on Mother's Day on Christ the Good Shepherd Day. We're we remember that every time you say goodbye, you grow a little. And Paul models that for us when he says goodbye to the Eph Eph Ephesian elders. But we say that knowing that all of our goodbyes for those of us that believe in Jesus come together in that reading that we read from Revelation when we're all gathered at the, at the throne of the Lamb. Amen? Amen. We continue with our worship in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all mates, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. 
he suffered and was buried. The third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. For he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue with our prayers of the church. Um, some of the situations that we're praying for are here in your bulletin. And I want to share a quick story. Um, you know, we, we have a, a partnership with Highland Meadows, the school around the corner. And we've not been able to do, <coughs> excuse me, do as much with Highland Meadows the last couple of years because of COVID. But it's starting to open back up. And this Friday was our Friday to, to feed the staff. And several of you were there for that. And, and if, if there's pictures on Facebook if you want to do that. But next week is... Star testing. And for anybody who is a teacher or knows a teacher, you know that the star is, is bad news. It's, it's, it, that's not a word that the teachers want to hear. And I got, an, I got a text from the principal earlier in the week said, some teachers from the school would like to come to Bethel and pray. So we had 10 teachers come, and we had a little prayer service on Thursday evening. And they've invited me to come tomorrow morning before school and pray with some of the teachers in the lunchroom and in their little break room. So the point is, God's continuing to move among us, right? And as we, as we share in each other's burdens, like, like Paul and the church of Ephesus did. So I asked you to specifically this week, pray for Highland Meadows, pray for our teachers. We fed our, our teachers here in, the, in, the, in our early learning center lunch this week last Friday as well. Pray, but especially for all the public school teachers among us that are, are going to be dealing with a very stressful week um, during star testing. Uh, and pray for your pastor as he has to get up really early. I have to be there at 7 a.m. to pray. Who prays at 7 a.m.? Let's come on. Let's go to our Lord in prayer. <laughs> Father God, we come to you thankful for all things. Uh, we pray for the sick, for the hospitalized, <clears throat> for those that are recovering, we pray specifically for Sharon Harper's granddaughter. We pray for all the teachers, especially the teachers dealing with star tests this week. Uh, we lift up specifically uh, the, the, the teachers at Highland Meadows. Uh, you know, we, we thank you that we, when we had our prayer meeting on Thursday and on Friday morning when we were giving uh, breakfast, that, that, that over 30 prayer requests were specifically given to our prayer team. Of, of things that to pray for. And, we, and, we, and I pray, Lord, that you will use me tomorrow morning to be with those teachers to pray uh, before school. And I, and I pray, Lord, however you want to move in that relationship between us and Highland Meadows, uh, it's been a couple of years since we've really been able to, to develop that fully. And so we pray, Lord, that over the next few months and years that that relationship will continue to blossom. Uh, we pray for the Ukraine and, and the conflict there with Russia. We pray for uh, parts of the world that are still dealing with COVID-19 in, in a significant way. And we pray for ongoing prayer for, for Marilyn, for Katie, for David, for Mel, for Sharon, for Cindy, for Michelle, for Jack, for Kenneth, for Mark, for Mary, for John, for Risa, uh, for Ruth, and for Sean, and for Kevin, and for Ruth. Uh, we pray especially for Ruth Hardesty, who, who notifies this week that she did get some favorable uh, test results regarding her cancer. We pray, Lord, that we will continue to serve you. We thank you for the mothers, Lord. Uh, we pray for those that grieve on Mother's Day because of the loss of a mother or because of a broken relationship with a mother. And, and we are reminded, Lord, that every time we say goodbye, we do grow a little. And you said goodbye to us with a promise to return as you restore all things. We pray this in your son's name. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with our offering. Uh, we will be bringing back Passing the Plate soon. We just need to work out some of the logistics on that. And we have a special offering from our choir. <clears throat>
We continue with the service of the sacrament. I ask you to stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptizer prepared, proclaiming him the Messiah, the very Lamb of God, and calling sinners to repent, they may bear fruit in keeping with repentance. Therefore, with the angels, the archangels, and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Taught by you, we are bold to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. It was on the night of his betrayal, our good shepherd, um, as he was getting ready to, to say goodbye for a time, even from his disciples going to the cross, he broke that bread, he gave it to them, saying, take and eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in the remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup, having given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, drink of it all of you, this cup is the new covenant of my blood poured out for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you eat and drink this in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you. Take this moment to share the peace with each other as you sing the Lamb of God.
We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and fervent love towards one another, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please stand for the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look up you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Our closing hymn, Shepherd of Tender Youth, number 864. just a minute. I want to bring your attention to the announcements. Um, Expansion, which is the mission network that is doing Hispanic church planting on the, the east side of the Metroplex as T2C2 transformation shifts to the west. So it's, Walker is a part of that network and, and they're having a kickoff event in our gym. Uh, just if you want to learn more about what they're doing and especially su to support Vicar Walker, that's going to be this coming Saturday from 5 to 8 in our gym. Um, and if you want more information about that, you can check, follow up with myself or Walker. Um, information on our Bible studies. Um, we're going to have a hymn festival at, at, at a sister church, uh, St. John's, down the road. A couple of things coming up. We are going to continue a monthly midweek service like we did in Lent. And that, the next date for that is going to be May 18th. And it'll be followed with lunch at 11 o'clock here. And, and finally, we're going to do Family Chapel this Wednesday. For those of you that don't know what Family Chapel is, it's a, it's a program we're doing in, in conjunction with our Early Learning Center um, where we once a month invite the parents and kids to come to chapel. And we do at the end of the day so that, that parents can participate as they are picking up their children. But we want to open that up to anybody. Anybody who's in the area and wants to come by for... Uh, family Chapel at 4.30 on, on this coming Wednesday. We'd love to have you. 
And our quilters are looking for uh, sewing equipment. And um, so that, there's an announcement on that as well. All right. There's a, there was a lot going on. We're going to have a, a fuller update of things next week. Uh, but, but do read your Bethel at a glance. There's a lot going on in the next couple of months. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.